Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, hi. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, again, congratulations for your victory, uh, Fanatic. So we are going to open the floor for some questions from the media. Uh, Alan? Yeah, I did me. Yep. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, hi, Bolster. It's Alan. Can Alan. you hear me? Yeah. Uh, hi. N nice glasses, by the way. Uh, so um, you have been into top eight, and uh, you are going to face another, you know, uh, one of the three teams, uh, Heretics and uh, maybe Tracy Sports or G2. Are there any specific one of, one of them you want to meet in the first round of your top eight? Uh, if I was to choose, it would be G2. Uh, the reason why is because uh, throughout the whole entire existence of uh, Valen, I don't think I've ever played them. And I think it will be a fun match. And yeah, I've, I've seen them at events ever since one of the Icelands, but I've never played them yet. And I, I think that will be a, uh, that's a match I want to, I want to, I want to beat. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our uh, next question is from Pedro. Hey guys, Pedro Romero here. Uh, congrats on the victory to everyone uh, within the team. I got a question for um, Durka. Obviously, you played very well, um, performing as the best player within the team, in my opinion. Of course, if you feel that's wrong, please uh, uh, correct me on that. But still, just asking about your performance, um, what do you think just went right for you to just continue to play well? You know, despite the shaky uh, first map uh, from that point going forward and all the way to the very end. Uh, I mean, Sunset was never a good map for me, I think. And uh, it went a bit shaky for me, but I was like just like trying to come help out others. And I kind of felt like we could have won, even though we were like down so much. But also I was like, can't really get tilted if I'm having a bad game or something. So I was like, uh, we, you know, like after we lost Sunset, I was like, we have ha Haven and Lotus now. It's like probably my best two maps uh, that I like really like playing. So I was just confident in them. So uh, I guess like just uh, playing well uh, in, in those uh, last two maps. Uh, like I think it benefited from me not getting tilted or like frustrated from like uh, the stress or whatever uh, in the first map. Like when I was going down like one five one seven. Oh, uh, we have another question for Pedro. I'm gonna send this over. Uh, <laughs> hold on. All right. Uh, I'm gonna send this one over to to Boaster. Uh. A little bit of a piggyback on, on my last question, but more so just focusing on just everyone with the team. Obviously, uh, despite the the shaky start to the series, there were moments in which everyone popped off, individually speaking, not just Durka. I'm sure I remember that back then there was a clutch made by Hero and then also yourself playing on the Operator, popping off on that as well. And so it just sort of gives out a, a very... Uh, uh, collective effort. And so when you see a team like that, playing well in which everybody else has their moments besides you know yourself or or Durka how important does that dance bring to the form of the team you know going forward into the future as you guys now head towards playoffs both you know physically and also mentally as well yeah it was something I was saying in the huddle before the first game is that each one of these players they know how to win um and that's like with us, whether it be Lock-In or Tokyo and for Hero, in Ye, um, we know how to win. We know what we're capable of when we're feeling ourselves. And I think honestly with our team, because everyone is so good, you don't need uh, one person popping off consistently. It's like you can almost take it in terms. And I think that's the trust you need in your teammates to know that, okay, all right, Dirk is going to carry me on this Lotus. All I need to do is do my job and be consistent and not try too hard if I'm not having the best success and just try to make his life as easy as possible. And it goes with all the other maps as well. Chronicle had a beast of a sunset at the start, like really bought us some rounds back and gave us a lifeline on defense. Um, and yeah, like you said, Hero on Haven as well, I can remember specifically. <laughs> uh, Albia, yeah, good vibes. No, um, no, he, he did a little Fortnite dance. He must have done something good that round. Uh, no, I can, I can find something. That, wait, let me think. Albia, 
when he goes left in the ISO RE, it looked not bad. <laughs> um, but no, like even Alfie yeah, in in our game versus DRX, he 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 performed so well, and he was like popping off on all cylinders. So it's like it's like it's just like everyone has capability, everyone has potential. It's just we just got to trust each other and and keep the vibes positive. Because if we can stay positive and we can stay good mood and good comms, then that allows for someone else to thrive who might not thrive if we were to go all negative and start being quiet. Thank you so much. And next question is from Facundo. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, my question is for Chronicle. Uh, but it's going to be two questions. Uh, first of all, uh, looking back on 2021, when when you won champions, uh, yeah, the you were the the last the last enemy of uh, crew dreams in in that champions, and nowadays you you have again the you made it again the the crew biggest enemy. Uh, how do you feel about being the the letdown of the of the dreams of crew? And my second question is about the the match, but then I ask you. So okay, the first question. Sadly, I didn't win champs, but I won against crew. I understand it. And uh, yeah, it's obviously like I felt about this match the same. Like just coming to the first map, I have to fucking this. I I have to redo my five k A's against them. Sadly, it didn't happen, but it was very, very close at some point in sun, sun, on Sunset, uh, even twice. But, I mean, I'm happy with that. I'm one again, against them again, and uh, I, can't, I can't be asked about it. And uh, about the match overall, I think we started very shaky. Uh, stress got over us at some point, and we felt like we are not <laughs> warmed up. But after that, we started to do some good stuff especially on the tax side of Sunset. Even though we lost it, we did well, and we didn't let us fall down really hard uh, after losing the map. And we just transferred all our performance uh, from map one to map two and three. And uh, I'm really happy with Derki performance also, just because he popped off today. He just spawned them on the second and third map, and uh, uh, it's obviously very good. So yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, we have another question from Pedro Romero. I want to send this one over to, to the coach. Um, just sort of asking about your point of view on first map and just kind of what, what was the biggest difficulty that faced the team, um, especially in the first half where you guys uh, were put in the deficit on the defending side. And sure, you guys were able to, to make that comeback um, in the second half. Obviously, uh, it didn't result in a victory, but still, um, biggest um, issues that you saw um, in that first map. I think we were a little bit passive when we didn't need to be. I think there was a lot of scenarios where we had the information and we could have rotated and, and held the site, but we just kind of played a bit off-site and forced ourselves into retakes, which we, we couldn't really win. So I think that was, the, that was early on in the half, and then I think uh, we won a couple of rounds, and Kron had a couple of big ones. Um, and then after that, I mean, we had a 3v1 that we just, we need to be winning that, but we just couldn't. So I think a lot of it was just, just having different options in our game. I think we kind of just, yeah, a bit too passive. I think we could have taken the fight to them a little bit more actually on the sites. Um, but I think that was the main thing. Just a few things to clean up overall. Right. Uh, I want to ask one more question again over to Boaster. Um, before the start of the competition, I asked you um, about your expectations for this event um, as you're gearing up for said event. And you said that basically it was zero. So I want to ask, I, I want to have a, a little bit of a, of a heat check right now as you guys head over to playoffs. Is it still zero? Are the, are the expectations still at the absolute bare minimum or has there been any change within that regard? Yeah, for me, I don't like expectations. I'm not expecting anything. Um, 
I'm just kind of going with the flow and going with the vibes. Uh, but yeah, I believe, like, I wouldn't be here if I didn't think that we could win this event and, and like, do well. So I believe in the players I have in front of me and I believe of what they are capable of and how sick at the game they are. And we just got to, they just got to believe in themselves. Ain't that right? Um, yeah, like they have, there's so much potential in this team um, and in these individuals that like, yeah, like who as an IGL beat up, you know, who wouldn't be chilling right now? <laughs> no, I'm not chilling. That's for sure. But uh, yeah, uh, no expectations, but I believe, I'm believing, believe to achieve. Oh. oh, thank you so much. Uh, once again, uh, congratulations, Fanatic. Uh, we expect to see more from you in the future. So, thank you. 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 No, <laughs> let's go. No. Uh, as we conclude today's press conference, I want to extend my gratitude to both teams, the media, and everyone who joined us. Thank you all. Have a great day and see you tomorrow. Thank you.